Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and today we have a new version of Unity. Unity 2021 LTS was just released. Now the LTS stands for Long Term Support, and this is the version you want to work with if you like stability and safety in your life. And that's one of those things that in all honesty, Unity needed for quite a while. This is more of a focus on uh, stability, user improvement, that kind of stuff, and it is going to get updates and support for the next couple of years. So that is the LTS version. By the way, if you want to walk on the wild side, what you want is the tech stream versions. I wouldn't generally recommend that right now. So 2021 was just released. Let's jump in and take a look at some of the key new features. So what you got here, this is the terrain demo. Uh, it was recently updated. It, it shows um, the terrain capabilities in the Unity game engine. There's some really cool stuff that they've done with the terrain system, which is actually kind of impressive as Unity uh, didn't even have a team working on terrain until recently. We also have some graphical glitching going on there, uh, which is less fun. Uh, but we've got a couple of new improvements here, but the key thing here is this is actually considered ready for prime time right now. It is a verified package, so it should be good to go. Uh, rendering artifacts aside. I'm not actually certain why that was happening. Uh, we've got some new features in this particular release. So for example, we'll come in here, we'll grab one of the trains so that it's highlighted. Uh, we have new tools here. The UI has improved a bit. Uh, Unity recently bought SpeedTree, uh, which is a dynamic tree LOD system. Uh, it has been integrated in uh, the stamp tools. So basically come on in here, go to stamp train. A uh, number of new brushes for stamping of train. So you can see doing stuff like this. Now the cool thing here is this here with the orange highlight around it, that is one chunk of train. This over here is another, and it seamlessly handles selecting between them. And in fact, we can actually stamp across train boundaries, and both of them will get an update, which is definitely a nice improvement. So the um, there have been improvements across the board to the train system, and including a graphical glitch of some form, which is more than a little bit irritating. Uh, so if you want to check that out, they also updated the terrain demo. Uh, I'll have a link to that in a minute. Uh, on top of that, probably one of the bigger improvements that they've got here is on the UI toolkit side of things. And what you can do is use this to build user interfaces made of all these various different components. Everything you see here, this is kind of a showcase of the controls that are available. Now you can come down here and check something else. So if you need to say implement a slider, you can see here is a slider. This is what it looks like. This is the C-sharp code uh, to programmatically generate that. Here is the style sheets that are available. So it's like CSS, but it's called USS. And we've got the XML markup, which in this case is called the Unity XML markup used to create this. So if you've ever worked with say like Windows Forms, uh, you'll you'll be immediately at home with this. Same with if you've worked with HTML, etc. And then on top of that, so the actual come in here now, same area, so the UI toolkit, you will find the UI builder is here. This is a visual interface for basically craft UI. So let's say I want to do, we do a container for our stuff. So let's say I want to organize things into a list. I just basically drag that in there. And now I can start populating the list of items. So say I want to have a label. I can drop a label into that entity right there. I want to have a toggle box. I can drop a toggle box in here. For all of these things, we can select them and handle them with a number of different uh, properties that we can set here. We get a preview of it over here. If you want to do styling, you can create a new styling sheet over here. I'm not going to do that. Um, so you can have styling that you switch between things. We've also got over here uh, theming support. So if you want to switch over to the light version, uh, you could do so. Uh, so definitely a, the UI builder is a nice addition, especially if you're using it to create more applications and such. But this can definitely be used to create game UIs. We've got controls for um, images. I don't know where to get to them. Where are they? I might have to do that container. Anyways, you, you have, um, you, you've got a lot of flexibility in terms of the user interface that you are creating. Uh, you can actually see the uh, the UXML that you're generating or the USSS that you're generating. And so you get this nice visual interface for creating or visual tool for creating uh, user interfaces, which is uh, one of the other nice things here. Now let's jump on over. We're going to take a look at the uh, release notes here. The nice thing that Unity do with the release notes now is they split it down by uh, the people involved. So we've got an overview of what is in this particular release. And we got programmers and artists categories. So they've done a couple of nice things with this release. They focused on uh, speed, performance, stability. And one of the things that they did with stability is they moved the pipelines back into the core. We'll get to that. Oops, did not mean to click that. We'll get to that in a second. I think it's covered under the, Un um, the Unity programmer section. So we're going to do a quick overview of what the new features in the 2021 LTS version are. Now, if you've been following this channel, you know I cover the betas. So some of this may not sound that new because it's, it's all been seen before in the previous betas. But uh, it is new to stable releases anyway. Anyway, so first off, we've got improvements to the .NET C-Sharp side of things. We've got C-Sharp 8 support and support for the .NET 2.1 API. 
definitely nice in that regard. Uh, we also have performance improvements to IL to CPP, uh, some pretty substantial ones actually. IL to CPP is the intermediate, is it language? I believe so. IL is the code that is generated by uh, C Sharp and other .NET languages, and then it is compiled over to C++ by Unity using a tool called IL to CPP. Uh, they've massively speeded up the improvements there. They've also done some little tweaks to it. Uh, for example, uh, handling generics uh, better also for some boxing improvements. Uh, I'm going to cover that at some point in time if I haven't already. We also got inc incremental player build support for Mac, Windows, uh, Android, Linux, and WebGL. So that means the build time is tied to your changes as opposed to the size of your project. So if you've got a giant project, you're going to definitely appreciate that changes. Uh, we've also got um, quick improvements to the asset creation tools in Unity. Now, one of the things they did is they redid the entire database back end for storing of assets. And now we're starting to see some of the benefits there. For example, they went back to the Book of the Dead example they did a while back, and they saw a two to three time improvement in speed up for bringing assets in, things like meshes and textures, etc. So I think it was called Asset 2.0, but Pipeline 2.0 maybe. Anyways, that is starting to uh, pay off. Also, we now have the import activity window, which kind of gives you insight into uh, how assets were imported, why it took so long, the dependencies that were there. So if you're having some weird build issues, uh, this could be a nice way to debug them. Um, we've got, uh, again, IELTS CPP runtime and performance improvements. This is where I was talking about this. So they've done some, uh, some of the boxing was uh, changed there. So the intermediate language to C++ back end basically is just faster and works better. Uh, we've got uh, performance and quality boost to the ERP uh, and the HDRP, uh, including the resolution scaling technologies that are pretty much probably the coolest new graphics technology over the last couple of years, at least in terms of real world input. Uh, and that is DLSS and AMD's FSR, which are basically ways of you render in lower resolutions and AI kind of upscales them to your native resolution. It just makes them look shiny. Uh, you can get 30, 40, 50% FPS improvements with these technologies. Uh, so those are in HDRP. Uh, AMD FSR is now also available for the ERP, which is the universal render pipeline. And yes, I'm going to call that call it that for the rest of history. Um, um, so we've got some improvements there, also some improvements to VFX graph, um, stability there, and advanced shader graph integration in VFX graphs means your graphics code runs more smoothly and with more features such as lit particles in the ERP. Uh, we've got mobile optimization workflow improvements, including implementation of Google's Play asset delivery requirements, adaptive performance from Samsung, which is kind of funny given uh, Samsung was recently caught doing some adaptive performance when it comes to benchmarking. Um, so that's definitely nice. We also have uh, device simulator improvements. So it's all a part of the main Unity installation. So if you want to test what your code looks like on a variety of mobile virtual devices, that's what the device simulator is all about. Um, the Unity Profiler can now see performance data in charts and gain insights. Uh, you can extend the Unity Profile with your own performance metrics. Uh, and then we've got some improvements to the XR, AR stuff, including updates to new sample and reduce um, rendering latency on hardware such as the Quest. So if you're working on VR or AR, there's a new demo and it should work a little bit better. Now, when we get over to the artist designer side of the equation, uh, this is probably where the majority of like the, the, the sexy new features are, uh, including, as I mentioned, the new um, user interface language designer, the UI toolkit is here. Uh, there is also a debugger for debugging how your UIs work. Uh, and yeah, so definitely uh, worth checking out. Uh, we also, again, have important performance improvements to world building and environments. Uh, so train tools is now verified, includes the new stamping brushes, refined material paint controls, GPU instancing, and speed tree integration. Uh, also that demo was updated for both HDRP and Universal Render Pipeline. Then we get into the 2D side of things, uh, kind of a smaller changes, but nice. So uh, Sprite Atlas now supports folders and has two new APIs for Sprite packing. Uh, the PSD 2D importer uh, now has new features, including the ability to turn layers into groups of sprites. So if you're working uh, with Photoshop, that should definitely be nice. Uh, animation includes user interface improvements uh, in the skinning editor, but you can now reuse character skeletons with 2D PSD importer, uh, which is definitely nice. A couple other new features in 2D. Uh, rendering, we've got some improvements there. So the ERP has support for uh, enhanced support for uh, decals, uh, subsurface ambient occlusion, light cookies, light anchors, light layers, and lens flares, uh, plus refined uh, reflection probes. Uh, you can now use forward or deferred rendering, AMD FSR or uh, 
Fidelity FX Super Resolution, which is that upscaling I was talking about earlier, is now available on supported platforms, including mobile. Uh, on the HDRP or the high definition render pipeline side of things, we have volumetric clouds and cloud layers. I actually did a video specifically about the new clouds. They're sexy, definitely are. Uh, you also find improved lighting with dynamic pre-baked, uh, enlightened, uh, real-time SSGI and baked uh, experimental probe volumes, global illumination, light anchors and lens flare, plus boost performance with burst burstified render loops, mixed cache shadows, and upsampling technologies. Uh, shader graph, use HDRP tessellation from shader graph to add dynamic details to meshes or create waves or traces in snow or sand. Shader graph's new custom interpolators and vertex animation functionality, you can create effects like flapping wings. VFX graph now officially supported on PC and consoles for ERP and 2D uh, with better support for mobile com um, compute capable devices. Uh, and we've got in their visual scripting side of things, univisual scripting empowers creators to develop gameplay mechanics or interaction logic using visual graph based system instead of writing code. In this version, visual scripting is available natively within the Unity editor. Um, not really sure what's new in that regard, a little bit vague in that regard. Uh, and we've got uh, improvements to cinematics as well. So definitely a lot in this release. Again, I, I do like the fact, uh, even though it's a, kind of a step back, that the uh, HDRP and the ERP are now just core features. That, that spinning them off to be modular just caused so many configuration headaches. I do think that that step back was a good idea. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is the UND 2021 LTS release. Uh, quite a bit in there on the whole. I do like their focus on stability and usability. I, I think that's something that has been lacking as they've been more just spinning up new features and not really refining existing ones. I do like improvements to train tools. I like the UI changes, but I'm interested. What do you think of this release overall? Uh, will you be updating? Are you whelmed or underwhelmed or overwhelmed? Let me know. Comments down below, and I shall talk to you all later. Goodbye.